Only you can prevent forest fires. Only you. Forest fire. You got a fire extinguisher? I guess I would say who isn't interested in fire? There's a time and a place for fire. Some fire is good. We're gonna put about a milliliter in the sphere and it will burst into flames. Good one. That's pretty cool, but I don't want flames on this thing. Yeah, watch how it grew on the camera. Too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Smokey would not have wanted us to use these ping pong balls, delayed aerial ignition devices, to start random fires. But these little balls are what Dexter here uses to launch out of helicopters when they light fires. Now, I want you to take a quick look at this old clip of Smokey Bear. Let a little fire get started. Catch on. Destroy. And your forest is nothing. Nothing for anybody. You have so many reasons to protect your forests. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. Now, there are two messages here. One, don't randomly start forest fires. And fire is bad for the forest. And your forest is nothing. Nothing for anybody. Anybody. And scientists now know that fire isn't bad, but I think subconsciously the media still perpetuates this idea. Destructive wildfires are a disaster. Because they're so overwhelmed, it's fierce, fast moving, and fatal. And to be totally fair, those fires are really dangerous. But every once in a while, some well informed writers work the science in that everybody should probably be hearing. So listen, there's a fire in Yellowstone Park. We'll put it out. Fire is good for the environment under certain circumstances. Forests have a natural cycle that requires purging burns to reinvigorate growth. Someone just said that to you, right? Yeah. Letting this fire burn is good for the environment. You know how I know? Huh? Because smart people told me. I decided to go visit some of these smart people myself, the scientists on the ground studying the fire. In fact, right here with the U.S. Forest Service in Athens, Georgia. Growing up, I used to always know only you could prevent forest fires. But then as I became a firefighter with the Forest Service, I was like, I don't want to prevent forest fires. I'm actually lighting the forest fires. Why aren't we preventing them? Only you. Turns out Smokey Bear was a great success. He was one of the greatest advertising campaigns in history. We got really good at stopping fire, but that wasn't exactly a good thing. And to understand this, we need to go back before humans came to North America. You see, lightning strikes would ignite fires. These fires would slowly burn across the entire landscape. Native Americans continued burning. It helped them clear plots, hunt, and live. And each part of the landscape probably burnt between every one and five years. Then when Europeans came, disease and war spread through native cultures. And because fire wasn't really part of European forests, the mentality was that fire killed the forests. And big fires, like the Great Fire of 1910, which wiped out three million acres of forest, the worst in U.S. history, just reinforced this idea. And the U.S. Forest Service decided we needed to do all we could to protect our forest from burning. We stopped a burning. And icons like Smokey represented that mentality. But somewhere along the line, the science started to catch up and declared that we needed to burn. This burning message was confusing, though. Everybody knew Smokey's don't burn message. They didn't know yet about the complexities that scientists were unlocking. Fire can be put on a landscape in a way where it can protect animals. It can be beneficial for plants and trees. Like, <laughs> that's exciting. We study fire, and then we try to understand the importance. Fire isn't going anywhere. It's always going to be a process as long as there is oxygen and fuel and an ignition source. One of the big efforts of the early Forest Service was fire suppression. We got pretty good at putting out fires, and when you stop fires, you get fuels accumulating that would normally have been consumed by regular fires. So now we know that stopping fire puts a lot of fuel on the ground, allowing for larger fires. And I think that a lot of people understand that, but this isn't the only reason that our forests need fire. I decided to do my own research. I took out a map and started visiting forests I knew had been burnt. Big tall pine trees, low undergrowth. They're burning here in this area, and so I'm just trying to film some of the recently burned areas. I think this is a good place to get some footage. And what I found were really neat looking habitats that I wasn't used to seeing. Some areas were scorched, other areas were sprouting these Dr. Seuss looking pine trees. You hear that? That's one of the rare species that lives here in this forest. It's called the red cockaded woodpecker. 
and I witnessed forest whose lingering smoke filled the undergrowth, making just a magical landscape. I could compare areas that were unburnt on one side of the road and burnt on the other, and I found forests whose understory was completely clear and open, something I'm not used to seeing. And then, on one stretch of road, the difference in habitats completely blew my mind. So I was driving down the road, and I saw this habitat over here, and so I had to stop because it's beautiful. You got these big, tall pine trees, a little, kind of a low undergrowth. You can walk through it really easily. And uh, I looked, looked at the sides of the trees here. Look at this, completely scorched by fire. Can you see the black going up and down that? And then I looked at this sign, wildlife management area. Now this is the more interesting thing. Stand here on the road, like when I was driving down it. Can you see the difference in these two habitats behind me here? Over here, big tall pine trees coming out, sparse vegetation. Over here, it's kind of choked out. I mean, it's big, tall, thick growth. It's like deciduous forest. There's still pine trees here. It's the same kind of big, tall trees. It means I got more questions. That's great. Yeah, that, that was a is good spot. Really good. <laughs> so yeah. what? what's going on there? Difference is fire. Once it goes to that too, it's really hard to get it back to what you saw on the other side of the street. Essentially, fire makes the ecosystem different. Fire is an integral part of the system. If you remove fire, you lose that exact system. With fire, pine forests like longleaf pine can thrive. Longleaf pine habitats in the southeast are like our coral reefs. They're home to hundreds of small herbaceous plants and animals that only thrive here. Most of them would not exist without fire. In fact, these species-rich pine savannas used to cover most of the south. Now only 3% remain because we cut all of them down and stopped the fires. But the one question I wondered was why exactly would fire give us this diversity? And that's part of what this team is solving using high-tech infrared imaging cameras. And so we basically get a movie of fire temperatures. Joe, Louise, Scott, and Dexter took me out to the research plot to show me how it works. Putting out some fuels, we're gonna put some different kinds of fuels and see how they burn. Fire is hard to measure, right? It's hot, it's dangerous. So the best way to measure it is from far away. So we have this camera that allows us to actually measure fire very precisely from far away. They're basically discovering that the little tiny areas that have pine cones get much hotter than everything else. Excelsior burned off in maybe 30 seconds to a minute, but those cones will burn for 15, 20 minutes. And that releases a lot more energy. And the energy is what's doing the work, in this case, killing plants. And that means that fire creates this mosaic habitat after it goes through. And that allows for different plants to colonize and establish in different patches of the forest. And the fire they found is why we have such high diversity in these pine savannas, the same pine savannas that once used to cover the entire south. So Smokey did know that random campers should keep their fire contained. Uncontrolled fires and smoke are bad for humans, but this shouldn't give fire a bad rap. We need fire, not only to keep the fuels down for our own safety, but we need these fires to maintain our traditional southern forests. Without the fire, we lose the forest and all the species that live in it. And thank goodness for modern science, because without smart people like this, we might not know how important it is to have fire in our forests. Forest fires, fire, 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 fire. burning. Oh. A hey, big shout out to the U.S. Forest Service. Those guys are fantastic. They've been helping me walk through this whole thing. Couple of things. First of all, if you've never been to a forest in this area, especially if you live there, go visit one right now. You're gonna learn a whole bunch. It's really awesome. Uh, secondly, if you've ever had a forest fire near you, I wanna hear about it. Leave your comments down below. We'll talk to you in the next video.